Hello and welcome to Explained in English. My name is Kai, and today I'm explaining the song Eleanor Rigby by the Beatles. So the song begins with the line, Ah, look at all the lonely people. I always thought that this line was, I look at all the lonely people, but actually it's the word ah, spelled A-H. Ah, look at all the lonely people. Ah is a word that shows wonder or surprise or amazement. It's kind of like the word wow in English. It's like saying, wow, look at all the lonely people. So look at is a command. It's part of the English imperative. And it's meant to direct our eyes or attention toward something. In this case, we're meant to focus on the lonely people. So lonely people are people who spend time alone. They are without friends or family or other company to be around. Kind of has the idea of being sad, perhaps wanting to be with other people, but in some way unable to be with other people. So this line is all about directing our attention to the lonely people that the writer sees. Next we have uh, the first verse, and it begins with the name, Eleanor Rigby. It's a first and a last name, and we don't exactly know who Eleanor Rigby is, but it certainly sounds like someone who works in a church. Maybe Eleanor Rigby is a volunteer, or could also be a nun, someone who either lives or works in a church. The next line, picks up the rice in the church where a wedding has been. So a wedding is a marriage ceremony. It's a celebration of two people forming a new family, or at least a committed partnership. And we have the words has been here. Could have used the word was or that the wedding was here or took place here. But I think for rhyming schemes, Paul McCartney, the writer, uses has been. So a wedding takes place in a church. And a church is a building where people gather. In this case, Christians gather to worship in a church. And Eleanor Rigby is in this church uh, after a wedding, and she picks up the rice. To pick up means to bend down and uh, take hold of something with your hands, so you grab something. For instance, if you drop your phone, you can bend down and pick it up. Here she's picking up rice. Rice is a type of food. It's normally small. It's a small white grain very commonly eaten in Asia. In this case, she's picking up rice because people have thrown the rice, the grains of rice, at the wedding couple. So the people who get married, when they leave the church after the wedding, it's very common for the people in attendance at the wedding to throw rice at the people who got married. And here it's Eleanor Rigby's job to clean it up, to remove it to pick it up off the floor. Next line, lives in a dream. So it, it could be she lives, but we get the idea that Eleanor Rigby doesn't live in the regular reality. In her mind, she's kind of somewhere else. So a dream is generally what happens in the mind when we sleep, like the thoughts and visuals that we get when we are in a deep sleep. So Eleanor Rigby lives in in a dream, saying she doesn't live in this world. She's kind of, her mind is somewhere else. Waits at the window. So waiting is to stay in one place and not move. And at the window, she's waiting at the window. So the window is an opening in the wall, often made of glass. And a window lets in light or air into a building. It's also so that you can see outside. And you can imagine Eleanor Rigby standing at the window, just looking outside. 
next line is wearing the face that she keeps in a jar by the door. So this is a very strange line, and it's not a literal line. A jar is a container, usually made of glass, and you store things in it. It could be, for instance, a jar of jam, or you can preserve food inside of a jar. But here we have this image of a glass jar being kept by the door. It's not a real jar, <laughs> but we get the sense that Eleanor Rigby is putting on an expression. And when it says wearing the face, that means wearing an expression. So your face is generally the part of your head with your eyes and nose and mouth. But in this case, it means an expression. So she puts on an expression that is ready for her whenever she needs it. An expression that you could just put on or take from a jar gives the idea of a fake expression, kind of artificial, not real or genuine. And because it's by the door or next to or near where people would enter or exit the building, she can easily access this expression and put it on whenever she's near others. It gives the idea of her being sort of fake or not genuine. The next line asks, who is it for? Who is this expression for? Is it for other people? Is it for her? Why is she putting on this sort of artificial or fake expression? And now we get to the chorus where it says, All the lonely people, where do they all come from? All the lonely people, where do they all belong? So where do they all come from? This isn't asking literally where people come from. Like, he doesn't want to know if people come from London or from New York or from Rome. It's very figurative. He just means, how has our society created so many lonely people? Where do we get all of these lonely people from? And where do they all belong? It's the idea of belonging. To belong means to feel at home to feel at peace, to have a sense of purpose. If you belong somewhere, you fit in and you feel comfortable and you feel part of something. He's asking, where do all these lonely people belong? What's their purpose in this life, in our society? In verse 2, we hear Father Mackenzie. Father meaning not as in your dad, not uh, your biological dad, but father is a word used for a priest, someone who is a leader in the church, in this case, the Catholic church. So Father Mackenzie writing the words of a sermon that no one will hear. A sermon is a talk or a speech given during a church service, usually to teach some kind of moral lesson or to learn about Jesus or the Bible. But Father Mackenzie is here writing a sermon that no one will hear, that no one will be able to listen to. Why? Because no one comes near. It means no one is listening. It gives the idea that the church is maybe empty or there are very few people listening to the sermons that Father Mackenzie writes. Look at him working. Here, once again, we have the imperative, look at. It's directing our attention, and we're looking at him working. Working is in the continuous or the progressive tense with ing at the end. Working shows an action in progress. And what is he doing with his work? He's darning his socks. Darning his socks. So to darn means to fix or repair or to mend holes. So socks are piece of clothing, an article of clothing that you wear on your feet, and you can imagine uh, his socks with holes in them. So he's fixing them at night with no one else there. We once again get this sense of being alone, and the loneliness of uh, this profession of being a priest. What does he care? Meaning, why is this important? The implication here is that, of course, he could use his time for something else, something more purposeful. And then we get to the chorus again, and then to the third and final verse, where we hear Eleanor Rigby again, this time, died in the church and was buried along with her name. Died. 
So this is the past tense of the verb die. To die means to stop living. When you reach the end of your life, you die. So Eleanor Rigby died in the church and was buried along with her name. Was buried is the passive voice of the verb to bury, and it means to be put underground. When people die, others often dig holes in the ground and then put the dead body inside this hole, and then they fill the hole with dirt and earth again. And this whole process is called burying someone. So Eleanor Rigby was buried, and it says, along with her name. So of course her name wasn't literally buried, but it means that her name was forgotten. When her body is gone, also people will forget her name. And that's what it says next, nobody came. This means nobody came to her funeral. So when Father Mackenzie was burying Eleanor Rigby, no one was there at her funeral. No one came to this burial ceremony, except for Father Mackenzie. He's the only one. The next line is, wiping the dirt from his hands as he walks from the grave. To wipe is a verb which means to brush off or to clean. So he's cleaning his hands because he just dug a hole. He just buried Eleanor Rigby. So he's wiping his hands off to clean them, getting the dirt off of them, right? Cleaning his hands. It says, no one was saved. Here we have the idea of salvation, saving the souls of people, which is really the job of a priest or a minister, Father Mackenzie's job. And the writer of this song, Paul McCartney, sees this as sort of a failure. No one was saved. And then the song ends with the chorus again. So this song is really kind of a sad song. Um, of course, we have the topic of loneliness, but it's also kind of a, a tragic song. Definitely the way that Paul McCartney sees the world full of lonely people is not a very happy image. But what's interesting is that we never hear from Eleanor Rigby herself, and we never hear from Father Mackenzie. We don't actually know if they're lonely people. They're simply working in the church, doing their jobs, doing their daily tasks. And we don't actually know if they're really, truly lonely or not. Certainly, it's the writer's perception that they are. But it could just be that the, the writer, or Paul McCartney, is quite lonely. And he's seeing loneliness in other people or in every other person that he sees. That's one interpretation. Of course, there are always many ways to interpret songs. Another way to interpret this song or look at it is certainly as a religious critique, the people that we do hear about, in this case Eleanor Rigby and Father Mackenzie, they are both religious people. They both work in a church. And it's certainly a critique on the usefulness of their activities, the usefulness of what they do. It certainly seems like the work that Eleanor Rigby does in the church doesn't seem to have value for the writer. It seems to be rather useless. Also, the work that Father Mackenzie does, writing his sermons, fixing his socks, working at night, to the writer, this seems to be a very lonely job and one that doesn't have a lot of value. So it's kind of a critique of religion in society. At least those are two possible interpretations, of which there are probably many. So I would like to invite you to listen to this song now, and hopefully after listening to this audio, the real song makes a lot of sense and you can look at it in a different way. I hope it's been helpful. Thank you and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Pronunciation practice. In this section, repeat after me, visualizing the meaning of each phrase as you say it. Let's begin. Ah, look at all the lonely people. 
Eleanor Rigby picks up the rice in the church where a wedding has been. Lives in a dream. Waits at the window. Wearing the face that she keeps in a jar by the door. Who is it for? All the lonely people. Where do they all come from? All the lonely people. Where do they all belong? Father Mackenzie. Writing the words of a sermon that no one will hear. No one comes near. Look at him working. Darning his socks in the night when there's nobody there. What does he care? All the lonely people. Where do they all come from? All the lonely people. Where do they all belong?